Hi, my name is Andres Jaramillo. I'm the SRA's officer for irrigation. Um, in this can clip, we're going to be talking to Steve Adder and Russell Jordan on their experiences with uh, far irrigation automation here at the Vatican. Uh, well, this farm is 100% gravity, um, so we don't have any pumps at all. Um, and also, this farm has got um, no recycling, so we sort of really wanted to try and stop um, runoff, or as much runoff as possible. We we'll always will get some runoff, but um, yeah, we want to eliminate as much as we could. Okay, so, so you don't need to have mains power yeah, on your farm right. to have the automation working. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, this, okay. one, this one here doesn't. Yeah, there's 104 hectares um, on the whole farm. Uh, there's six um, gravity outlets, uh, and we've automated five of them. Uh, which is about 84 hectares. It's, we, we'd only bought this farm in the last couple of years, but we'd sort of be around at least twice a day. Most of the time's a lot more because it, it doesn't fit in the same rotation as the other farms, or the water doesn't come down the same time as the other farms. It takes a little bit longer. So you, you sort of sometimes you might go five or six times a day just checking, make sure the water's out the other end, and then changing it, and, and through the night too, not just the day. Yeah, it's about 10 k's um, by ute sort of thing to get here. Um, that's one way and then by the time you do a round, so you lose probably oh, half to three quarters of an hour just to come over and have a look around and, and yeah, then go back again. Why was it so important for you to manage the runoff on this farm? Uh, it's like any of the farms really, we, um, the water's too dear, so I don't really like wasting water. So if we can um, shut the water off early or, or at least when we first see it, it well it saves a lot of runoff uh, and yeah, don't want to lose anything, it costs too much as it is. So. How did you go about the process of working out where you'd put these sensors into your field to get the, the best timing to shut off water? Actually there's sensors up inside the paddock, so that's, that's what we've got at the moment. We did trial them at different stages or different positions up the block um, just to see where is the best. Um, we've sort of come to about a, a 100 metres from the end, seems to be alright. You still get some runoff, but, but um, way less or, or yeah, substantial less than what you would it if you had seen the water at the bottom end before we shut it off. Well, once the water does hit, it will either open up the next set uh, or the next valve and shut that valve off, or in certain times, maybe after harvest or whatever, we could also set that um, to be a delay um, before it does that. It could be one, two, three hours or whatever we program um, before it will change, open up the next valve and shut that one off. But yeah, when, when we've got a schedule going, that's what we set it. We just mainly, it'll, it'll open the next valve. So you've gone from previously maybe two or three visits during a day just to check that to check that everything's running properly or to yeah. change the valves over. So yeah. you've possibly halved that time coming back to, to maybe only once a day coming yeah. over to just make sure everything's running properly. Yeah, that's right. And it doesn't have to be the same time of the day. Like before I'd be probably between half past five, six in the morning and the same thing in the afternoon. It could be whenever I've got a spare moment in the middle of the day. So nothing's more frustrating to be pretty close to finishing a job on a tractor yeah. and then to say, I've got to go, otherwise I'm going to have a flood at the end of the paddock. Yeah, that's right. Because yeah. you know this has worked. Or you try to, oh, I've done in the past, you have to go somewhere, so you either shut, the, shut it off two hours before it should be, um, because if, if not, might not get home till you know, 8, 10 o'clock at night, it's supposed to be down at 6, so I might be leaving at 4 in the afternoon, but I can just go. I don't have to be worried about changing them, or you know, change them two hours early and hasn't made it at the bottom. So, what, what other devices have you installed here to give you that confidence that that the, the irrigation is occurring the way it should be? Yeah, well, I think when you first do it, it, it is a bit daunting, you're not game to do it, but yeah, we have got um, a flow sensor to, to tell us what sort of flow rates are coming through um, from, from the channel, uh, and we also have a pressure um, sensor inside one of the cylinders, so if it does happen to be too low or too high, um, yeah, you can sort of keep an eye on that sort of thing, and, and definitely the flow rates, you, you can definitely know if the channel is blocked or something like that, you can see that we're having trouble with the flow and then come over and clean the channel. So having that constant monitoring because those sensors, both the flow meter and the pressure transducer which is registering the height of water in the cylinder, they're locking continuously. Yeah, yeah we can have it all set up to send you an SMS or an um, email, whichever you've got on your phone. Most people carry their phone with them 24-7. What's the yep. next stage for you? Uh, we'd, we'd like to definitely finish this farm off so we don't have to come. This is the furthest farm from home. Um, and we've got another two farms away from home as well. We've got four farms all up. So at the, at the moment you've developed enough confidence from the project to see that you're prepared to invest further 
into finishing off this farm and also then expanding that over to the other three farms. Yeah, definitely. I can see the savings of me, especially time-wise, um, fuel on my ute, kilometres, uh, and all that sort of thing, plus water savings. Um, yeah, I, I believe it would be great to get it all done.